good fortune to meet the mother goddess of the Illuminati. She corroborated my research, adding that the Illuminati hierarchy are shape-shifting dragons who require the consumption of Aryan blood in order to maintain their shape-shifting capability, hence their opposition to interracial marriages. As we watch these clips of Arizona Wilder, notice that when she was asked about the history of the reptilians, that she says that she was made to learn this. No matter who she thinks taught her this information, the fact that a bunch of Satanists made someone learn something sounds like programming to me. Your experience um, uh, being brought up in this uh, Illuminati um, environment, um, were you ever told anything about where these reptilians came from and, and, and what is the history of it all? Uh, I was made to learn through Mothers of Darkness, which is a certain aspect of the organization because that was an early, early part of my training, uh, the history of what was the Illuminati on, the, on this planet. And what I learned was that the Aryans originally were from Mars, and they came, they were, the, the reptilians came to that planet to uh, they came from another place. They came to that planet. They came to rule because they and and they wanted to mix. So they said with that race, and um, but they became the overlords. That's an interesting term, overlords. Brian Desbro uses it almost thirty times in his book, compared to Ike using it one time, and even that was in a quote. It doesn't prove that the info was planted by Desbro, but it is a suspicious coincidence. And the Martians, or Aryans, were seeking to escape from it. They went to the moon, and then were there attacked. And they then went to Earth and established culture here on Earth approximately 6,000 years ago. And at that point in time, they were all they were doing well and they were mixing with indigenous the indigenous population of this earth they were getting along with and then about four thousand years ago the Aryan or the uh, reptilians arrived here and again began to take over uh, and they in, they instilled themselves in different places uh, underground in in the uh, Earth and also this one part of them, the ruling part, took over and became involved in the politics and in the religion um, and started controlling through these means at that point in time. A woman named Spa Lee, who is widely regarded as trustworthy by many in the truth movement of all backgrounds, claims to be a former programmer for the Illuminati. She is currently in hiding, we hope, but her writings, which are still posted on the internet, fill in many of the details about how mind control slaves are programmed. One time she was asked about this reptilian idea. The question is, Svali, I have to ask you this. There are stories floating around on the internet about the Illuminati and other agencies being run by extraterrestrials, in particular a reptilian race operating from a higher dimension. Any thoughts on that? My answer will probably cause a lot of anger and it's not meant to step on any toes. Here it goes. I have never seen an alien or extraterrestrial. I have seen some programming to make people think they saw aliens as a cover story for programming, if they remembered. None of the head trainers I knew or others on the leadership council believed in aliens, although I never asked them. I personally believe that the reptilian stuff is actually the demonic at work. I have seen shape-shifting and other stuff because of demonic influence, Okay, so some of you here will say, gee, she believes in demons, that's as far out as aliens. Well, this is what the Illuminati certainly believe in. They know there are spiritual realities, and they think that they can control them. Those of a more cynical bent would say that the shape-shifting was a drug-induced hallucination and group hysteria in the context of a ritual setting. I will let each reader decide based on their personal comfort zone, but no, absolutely no reptiles or aliens seen in Washington, D.C., or San Diego, California, as of five years ago. At least I never saw them. Interesting that Ike seems to validate this idea that spirits can make a person shapeshift. It was a, a lady who um, channeled this uh, 
consciousness back in 1990. And um, I'll just read what it said because it's so relevant to now um, with the hindsight of the years that have passed. And if anyone doesn't you know, believe in shape-shifting, they should have seen this woman's face when she was doing this because she became someone else. Her face, it was like, whoa, um, changed to a completely different uh, face. I would say that Arizona Wilder's testimony is worth listening to. It seems to be consistent with high-level satanic rituals. I would suggest one possibility is that she may have been made to learn the reptilian story, as Spali suggested, so that if her programming did ever begin to break down, she would tell people that it was reptilians instead of satanic rituals. Something that a lot of people miss about her testimony is that the entire purpose for the ritual she did was to summon what she calls demons, or old ones, so that they could give more information about how the New World Order should be set up to the top-level people. It's clear that she believes it's the demons, not reptilians, that are behind the planning for the New World Order. They materialize from out of another dimension and are present at rituals, and they are so powerful and... Um, their, their presence is, is an, such an evilness about them and they want out of this other dimension and they can't they, they have to be called out by someone who has that power and the reptilians don't have this power that's, that's very important that they don't have this power so these during ritual these old ones are called out um, and they are what Christianity would have called the demons, and they want out. They're always demanding to be let out, and so you have to be very powerful to keep them in line and to make them go back when it is time for them to go back. Why do the reptilians want to manifest these, these quote, demons um, at the rituals? It brings power to the rituals. It brings power to them. It, they are told things by these entities, and they are encouraged uh, to go on with what they're doing, and knowledge is imparted to them through these entities. If this is the case, why is there no attempt to see what we can learn about them? Why all this focus on reptilians and Mars and Aryans? By her own admission, they aren't calling the shots. The spirits behind them are. I want to mention a few more things about the reptilian issue before moving on. She states that the reptilians change back to reptilians when asleep. Considering how many of them were educated in schools, where they also lived amongst hundreds of others in dorms, and many of them are in the armed forces, you would think that someone would have noticed this happening by now. Hey buddy, you don't look so good when you fall asleep. She states that the royal reptilians can't stay in human form at the scent of blood, and transform and go crazy ripping into their victims. And in all those years, nobody has ever noticed this when they cut themselves, been around blood, menstruating women, etc.? Considering they are so public, there is no way that they have never been in the vicinity of blood. The other testimony that Ike uses to confirm the reptilian issue is that of Credo Mutua. This is what Ivan Fraser said about Mutua. Quote, soon after this, the Arizona Wilder interview, David re-emerged from a trip to Africa, announcing a new video called The Reptilian Agenda, which is an interview with a Zulu shaman called Credo Mutua, who is confirming the evidence of shape-shifting reptilians. Credo recounts various ancient Zulu myths about the reptilian race which manipulates mankind, which are taken literally by himself and Ike, and seen as a remarkable confirmation of the reptile-human race theory. Although Credo's version is that the race actually originated on Earth, left it, and returned. Furthermore, the central reptile Aryan race thesis is fundamentally challenged by Mutua's assertion that the black leaders of his country and their bloodlines are from the reptilian race also. Mutua also speaks about personal encounters with gray aliens, which he states are servants of the reptilians. Mutua elsewhere, rather contradictorily, states that the grays are actually the reptilians with an artificial skin. This contradiction is not challenged by Ike. I also agree with Fraser when he says that both Mutua and Arizona Wilder may be consciously very genuine in recounting their experiences according to their memories, but I believe we need to be extremely careful before buying in to what amounts to circumstantial stories with no proof.
Also, I want to address this idea that's circulating on YouTube and other video sites, that people's pupils change, and you can tell that they're reptilians this way. This is an effect caused by uploading a video with bad resolution. The same effect is happening with other elements in the picture, but you only notice it on the eyes because the eyes are very detailed things, and when the pixels cut out on them, it's more noticeable than it is with the other elements in the picture. Even Ike doesn't believe this stuff. All over the um, internet, people started talking about this now, and these pictures are circulating. Uh, this might be a, probably is a, a, just a trick of the light, but it's very symbolic of what we're looking at. Uh, Desborough gave Ike another view that became very important to Ike's teaching. He gave him his current view on Jesus. Most of you might not know, but Ike's view about Jesus changes dramatically from book to book. For instance, the early Ike is very confident that Jesus existed, only that the Bible didn't include parts of his story that it should have. There is a thin line of truth in the Bible, certainly. And many of the things that the being Jesus, who certainly did exist, and certainly did die in that way, um, says are accurate reflections of what he said, but they are taken out of context and misinterpreted. One interesting way to demonstrate that his views changed dramatically about this from book to book is by first quoting this passage from Truth Vibrations. He says, quote, My own feeling and what I have channeled and seen leads me to believe that Jesus survived the crucifixion. I had a very strong vision of Jesus on the cross. During that vision, I was with Jesus, experiencing what he felt. He experienced great pain in his hands and wrists, and he was utterly exhausted. I then saw a pole being raised with a cloth, which was offered to his mouth. From this he took a drink. Soon after this he appeared to lose consciousness. When he awoke, he was lying with people all around him, attending to his wounds. They were all in white, I remember. It was clear that Jesus was in a state of shock. He whispered, I live, I live as though he had expected to leave the physical body. I had other visions and channeling, which together gave me this overall picture of what actually happened 2,000 years ago. Now listen to his version of the crucifixion in his next book, Love Changes Everything. When the channeling, crucifixion, had finished, one of the followers asked if Jesus could be taken down, and his request was granted. He was still alive at this point, but the swift movement of the sword removed him from the physical level. Only Jesus knew for certain he would die. So, in this version, Jesus did die, which is obviously a massive contradiction from the previous book with no explanation of the discrepancy. Keep in mind, in that book, Jesus personally talks to David on a regular basis. For instance, Jesus is quoted as saying things like, quote, I was so determined, David, so determined to ensure that the truth could not disappear because one man was nailed to some wood, and I knew the effect it would have on Lucifer Satan if the energies were powerful enough. Ike always tries to downplay his famous claim to be the Son of God. He always said he was simply claiming to be a Son of God, not the Son of God. But the problem is, is that he really did claim that he personally was the one spoken of in the Bible that was going to return. He claims in this clip to be the second coming of Christ. If you think if Jesus were alive today and you'd been alive then, he would be doing writing books and doing promo tours and appearing on television programs and so forth. Would he be promoting it in the same way Absolutely. that you are now? Tell you the funny thing, Nicky, you know. Um, the Bible actually predicts the coming of the Son of Man, the coming of the Son of God, um, at this time of great change. Well, n right now? Yeah. Well, yeah, so at this time so of great change. The Bible predicts you in a way. Yeah, exactly. It, ca it, ca it calls the being the Son of Man. Where is that? So people. This is in the, the book of Revelations towards the end. Right. And it's also earlier on in, in some of the Gospels too. Um, what do they expect this son of man to look like? Do they expect him to wear a beard and a white robe? Well, they don't expect him to be a Hereford United goalkeeper. Correct. But did they ex the, the, the people 2,000 years ago didn't expect their son of God or whatever to be a carpenter's son, and he got the same reaction. You see, what it is, it's about incarnating into a body uh, that relates to the world as it is at the time. That's why Jesus was a carpenter's son and worked in, in, in Palestine. Why, why in this life have I... Because you're I, a broadcaster. Exactly. And why was I taken into the communications? You were taught self-discipline in sport. Correct. Mm. And all this that. is how it's done. Yeah. And um, so I'm comfortable talking to you, and I'm comfortable on television, I'm comfortable in broadcasting, which, which, which is a great help to get over the truth, as the world is at the moment where the media is the vehicle to do it. Um, you are given the gifts, and we're all given the gifts, uh, that, that, that uh, we need 
in particular lifetimes and at this time in this lifetime i need certain abilities to um be comfortable uh, on the media and know the media and and that's what's been given